My name is Ryan Buckley. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a technology company called FitCode. Uh, before I get into what we're going to talk about tonight, I do have to shout out to my amazing marketing director, Stephanie Chacharone, who is somewhere in this audience, and I can't see out there. But Stephanie, your talent at marketing is only surpassed by your ability to get me to commit to speaking engagements, which is also my worst fear. So <laughs> if anything goes wrong tonight, please blame her. So. Thank you. So, love, loss, and startups. I'm sure many of you are wondering what these three things have in common. And for me, it was one week in the year of 2015. On Monday, my best friend and now husband proposed to me, in a very sweet way, I will say. Story later. On Tuesday, I launched my very first startup. And on Friday, my mom, my champion in all things, was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. So you all can imagine how much fun I was to be around that weekend. DeAndre, you certainly passed the test. When you have a childhood like I did, when everything is beautiful and hardships come in the form of no TV on weekdays, you are really setting yourself up to learn some pretty hard lessons in life. And while at 26 I thought I had learned quite a few lessons, as I think most 26-year-olds do, I had been through cancer with my mom the year previously and learned about fight and grit. I was really missing some key things. I was missing patience and acceptance and perseverance and a stability and buoyancy within my own soul, my own heart, that can only come from an unwavering hope that I found in my darkest hours. And that's what I wanted to speak to you all about tonight. So, the art of the pivot. I call it this, and every time I talk about the art of the pivot, I only can think of the Friends episode when Ross and Chandler are saying, pivot! So <laughs> I hope that brings a little lightness to this little bit of a dark topic tonight. So if you ever start feeling emotional, just think of that scene when they're yelling, pivot at each other. <laughs> when you get an idea, and then when you figure out that, hey, this idea may be worthy of the opportunity to build it. And then when you get an investor, and then when you start building your company and you hire contractors who become full-time employees, and the next thing you know, you have paying clients, there is one thing that people will ask you at every single stage of your business, and that is, how does it make you feel that nine out of 10 startups fail? <laughs> well, yeah, there are a lot of things I like to say. Um, one of which is you really know how to take the wind out of a girl's sail, but I don't say that because the truth of the matter is FitCode has failed nine times, but we have pivoted ten. When I was watching my mom go through cancer treatment, I realized you can never predict what's going to come next in life. All you can do is look at your circumstance and ask yourself, what is the next right move? In Cancer, you can't forecast. You can't three-year plan. When you're dealing with stage four metastatic cancer, you're dealing in the present. You're dealing in the right here, the right now. What is the next best move? Now, in 2015, I didn't know it, but in her final journey, my mom taught me an absolutely invaluable lesson as a CEO, and that is that I can fail as long as in that failure, I continuously ask myself, what is the next best move? What can I do right here, right now, to make this company successful? Another amazing thing about that question, what is the next best move, which, again, I ask myself all the time, is its ability to not only help you overcome failure, but to also teach you how to take the first step. I had never been the CEO of a technology company before FitCode. My team's here tonight, and they know that, so this isn't some big admission. I had never even worked in the technology field. I graduated from the University of Washington with a degree in political science and a passion. Woo! <laughs> Trying really hard to be grateful right about now. Um, <laughs> and a passion in, uh, for ocean conservation studies. I then took the very logical next step with my degree and traveled all over the world as an international model. Dad, thank you so much for your patience. You all can imagine what it was like to raise me or try. Um, so 
How did I become a non-technical CEO of a technology company? By doing three things. By identifying a problem, creating a solution, and asking myself every single day, what is the next best move? Without that question, this task would have been too big, too daunting, and too unknown to even start. But cancer taught me to stop looking so far ahead. Bring it in, break it down, focus right here, right now. What is the next best move? And that is how cancer taught me to be a CEO. The power of perspective to overcome fear. Fear is an unbelievably powerful emotion. It can absolutely paralyze you, but it can also empower you. Before I built FitCode, it was just a seed of an idea. I was as overcome by the fear of failure as I was by the fear of success. I was paralyzed with thoughts of what if this idea is a bust? What if this idea is really successful and I lose myself in its growth? What if no one cares? But then my mom got sick and I knew real fear. Cancer taught me what a privilege it is to know fear in this sense. When I was faced with the reality of real and permanent death, I actually began to learn how to live. I learned two really important things, which was not to believe my own hype and not to believe my own nightmare. I knew that I could never banish fear and stress entirely out of my life, but I did have the ability to reframe it. So I took my fear of failure and I turned it into a fear of not trying because I never wanted to regret not being brave enough to try. The startup world is absolutely saturated with stress. And in fact, I've noticed this trend across most industries that there's this glorification going on of busy. But that's for another talk and another time. Actually, Stephanie, do not get any ideas. That's not another talk <laughs> or another time. <laughs> I'm really regretting saying that. Um, but to be successful in the startup world, you have to walk a very, very fine line between success and failure. And oftentimes, if you're doing it correctly, that line is to something completely unknown. You are creating in uncharted territories, you are doing something that's never been done before, and you are doing it without a roadmap. The stress of this can overcome most people. But cancer, again, gave me the perspective of the inconsequential origin of this stress. I could leave my office, as I did, this time without my team knowing, every single Monday at 2 p.m. to go sit with my mom in chemotherapy, and I could have FitCode on the brink of failure. But watching my mom deal with real stress and real fear with absolute unbounding grace gave me the perspective and the ability to walk back in the next morning, say, this is just business. This is a privilege to be a part of. What is the next best move? And that's how cancer taught me to overcome fear. The importance of buoyancy, and I do not just say this because I was a swimmer, but this has to go a bit deeper. Um, one of the most powerful things I have learned over the last two years is the importance of a stable and buoyant soul. Life will send you a storm. That is an absolute guarantee. But if you can anchor yourself in hope, you can bob high, you can bob low, but you will remain stable. Fear, yes, fear is a very powerful emotion, but hope, hope can change it all. Hope knows no bounds. Hope isn't naive. Hope isn't saying, I hope this company is successful or I hope she gets better. Hope is the acceptance that it may not and that that is okay. Hope is that little light that just doesn't go out when everything else is dark around you. And it's that voice in your head that you hear that says, stick with it, just stick with it. Hope isn't afraid of failure and death. Hope transcends it all, and it really just encourages you to enjoy the journey. Hope is also the precursor for gratefulness, which in my opinion is the hardest to acquire, but also the most beautiful of all qualities. It is the ability to take the sadness of a death and turn it into the gratefulness of time well spent. Therefore, it is hope that will always keep you buoyant. Now, I wish I could stand here in front of you guys all and tell you that I take all of this advice every day and I listen to, you know, these things that I know and advice for other people, but it's not true. The fact of the matter is there are still many days when my husband finds me crying in the bathtub eating coffee ice cream, but 
he also is a very patient man, and life is about balance. The important thing to remember, though, are three things. When, no matter what life throws at you, just think of these three things and ask yourself, what is the next best move? How can I harness this fear? And am I being hopeful? Because a hopeful soul knows that when you get very tired, you need to learn to rest, not to quit, and to always, always stick with it. Thank you.